Hello, my name is Rahul and in today's video, I'm going through exercise 2.2 from the Art of Electronics. In this exercise, we need to go through a pulse generator circuit. Basically, we are analyzing the circuit first of all. I'll go through some background on RC circuits, charge curves and discharge curves, and then I'll go through the solution that's required for the question. So let's just quickly look at the circuit and the question. So the question says, show that the output pulse width for this circuit shown here, and this is the output pulse width, so from this point in time to this point in time, is approximately T equals 0.76 R3, which is this component here, times C1, which is this component over here. So a resistor capacitor. The question does give us a clue, and it says a good starting point is to notice that C1 is charging exponentially from minus 4.4 volts towards 5 volts with the time constant as above. So the hint is basically looking at this second portion of the figure. What it is showing you is the base voltage of Q2. So Q2 is this NPN transistor over here, and this is the base voltage. You can see when the input voltage is switched on, so it goes from 0 to 5 volts, the voltage at base of Q2 goes to minus roughly 4.4 volts here. So with all that in mind, let's quickly go through RC circuit. And I'll show you the charge and discharge curve for an RC circuit. So on the screen now, you've got a simple RC circuit over here. So you've got a resistor and a capacitor in series. The time constant, which is the time it takes for the RC circuit output voltage, which is the voltage across the capacitor to reach 63.2% of its final value. So in this case, the final value is one volt. So for the time constant, which is R times C, the graph will have reached 0.632 volts on here. You can plot the charge curve using this equation on the screen, where Vc is the capacitor voltage, so the voltage output voltage as well, and Vs is the supply voltage, and you've got in brackets 1 minus E to the power of minus T over Rc. So R and C obviously the capacitor and the resistor, and the T is the x-axis on this graph. The discharge curve can be written as Vc, which is the capacitor voltage or the output voltage, is equal to the supply voltage multiplied by E to the power of minus T over Rc. Now both of these equations are plotted on Excel using this graph over here. The charge curve goes towards 1, and then with the exponential as we see here, so it's 1 minus the value on this graph here. The discharge goes from 1 exponentially down to zero. Now the circuit itself, we have two transistors, Q1 and Q2. We have some resistors and some capacitors. So you can see the setup of the circuit on the screen now. So let's look at the circuit when Vn is equal to zero. Vn is this point over here. When that is zero, basically this transistor is not switched on. And you can think of it as a very high value resistor. You can think of this connection from here to here as not connected. So Q1 is off, which means that VA is connected to 5 volts. And VB is equal to 0 0.6 volts over here. And that is due to the voltage drop on this diode from the NPN junction, from the PN portion of the NPN transistor. So we have approximately 0.6 volts across this here. So obviously this is ground. So ground plus 0.6. So VB is equal to 0.6. So across the capacitor, we have a voltage of 4.4 volts from here to here. Now, if this point is at 0.7, this means that Q2 is in saturation or is switched on. So you can think of this as a very small resistor from here the collector to the emitter. So that means that V out is going to be equal to zero as it'll be closer to this point than this point because of this resistor here. And the resistor I'm pointing to is R4. So that means when V in is equal to zero, our V out is also zero. And this is because Q2 is switched on and is saturating and Q1 is switched off. The voltage across the capacitor is 4.4 volts with the positive portion on this side and 0 0.6 volts on this side. So the positive voltage from A to B is 4.4 volts. 
Now let's look at a second scenario and this is when the voltage on Vn goes from 0 to 5 volts. So we get a step change on this voltage and it goes instantly from 0 to 5 volts. So what happens then? Well basically Q1 goes into saturation. Now if you remember the capacitor voltage was 4.4 volts with the positive direction on here. But now that would be connected down to ground as you can think of Q1 as a very small resistor connecting the collector and the emitter on this side. So essentially what that does is takes the base of Q2 down to minus 4.4 volts. So if this is minus 4.4 volts, that means that the voltage across R3 is 9.4 volts and that becomes important later on. And we have a conduction path through R3 and C1. So R3 is essentially going to be charging C1. So now that the base voltage of Q2 is less than 0.7, the transistor Q2 turns off. So you can think of this connection from collector to emitter as open circuit. And that means that V out will be pulled up to 5 volts. To summarize, when Vn goes from 0 volts to 5 volts, Q1 goes into saturation, which connects C1 down to ground and produces minus 4.4 volts on the base of Q2, which essentially turns Q2 off. The capacitor starts to charge from R3, capacitor being C1. And as Q2 is turned off because of minus 4.4 volts here, as you don't have the positive 0.7 volts here, V out is pulled towards five volts. So V out goes positive and you get five volts on V out. So as soon as you trigger this point here, you basically get a positive output down here. So when that is happening, we have a RC connection, as we saw with the charge curves before, between R3 and C1. So R3 is charging C1 with the exponential curve that we saw before. When this input voltage is switched on, there is 9.4 volts across this resistor R3. So that is essentially a 9.4 volt supply for our RC circuit that I showed you a few slides earlier. And to switch the Q2 on, basically to turn off V out. So as Q2 comes on, V out will go negative as this becomes a smaller value resistor or effectively a smaller value resistor over here between the collector and emitter. You would need at least 0.7 volts or 0.6 volts on this point or the base of Q2. So what we need to do is calculate the time required for this RC circuit, so basically R3 and C1, to go from to go from minus 4.4 volts up to 0.6 volts. Now if you start thinking about this system individually, you can remodel the circuit with a VS of 9.4 volts and an RC circuit. And in that case, you would need to charge C1 up to 5 volts to get Q2 to turn on. That can make it a little bit easier to calculate the time required or the pulse width of the output signal over here. One of the important things to note when all of that is going on, you have to maintain this voltage on, otherwise the output signal will switch off. So these are just some of the graphs from the simulation I did on the circuit. So you can see Vn is the green line and the signal goes on at 10 microseconds. So that's the input signal. And the red line is the output signal. So as soon as V in goes high, we can see our output signal comes on. And at roughly 86 microseconds, maybe somewhere between 180 microseconds, the output signal goes off. So the VA is the capacitor on the left hand side. And VB is the base of Q2 or the capacitor on the right hand side. The base of Q2 goes down to minus 4.4 volts, as you can see on this graph over here. And then it begins to charge up until 0.6 volts. And that's when the transistor will switch on and maintain that voltage at 0.6. If we were to turn the V in signal off around here, the V out signal would also go down. So it wouldn't maintain the fixed pulse if the input signal was removed. So how do we calculate the requirements from the question? which is asking us to show that the pulse width is equal to 0.76 times C1 times R3. So on the screen now, you've got the calculations for that. I'm not going to go through this calculation over here, but that essentially is basically the time constant for the RC circuit. So as I mentioned before, 
we can remodel that RC circuit using just RNC components with a power supply of 9.4 volts. Or we can think of it another way, which is basically the second bullet point on the screen now. And that is the base voltage needs to go from minus 4.4 volts, as we saw in the graph earlier, up to 0.6 volts or 5 volts absolute if we are looking at this simplified circuit individually to turn Q2 on, which would turn V out off. So let's look at the absolute case where we need our RC circuit or the output circuit from the RC circuit to get to 5 volts with a power supply of 9.4 volts. So VC, which is the voltage across the capacitor, is equal to VS, which in this case would be 9.4. And in brackets, we have 1 minus E to the power of minus T over RC. The values for the RNC are basically 10 nanofarads and I think 10 kilo ohms but it doesn't matter for this calculation. So we have five equal to 9.4 multiplied by everything that's in the bracket over here. So what we need to do is simplify this equation. So the first thing we can do is take 9.4 to the other side. So we get five over 9.4 is equal to one minus e to the power of minus t of RC. Then we can bring the one to the other side. So we get five divided by 9.4 minus one as we have a positive one on that side is equal to minus e to the power of minus t divided by rc. Now if we figure all of this out, basically we get minus 4.681 on this side. We can basically remove the two negative signs from both sides and we end up with 0 0.4681 is equal to e to the power of minus t over rc. If we take the natural log of 0 0.4681, we basically get minus t divide by RC. So it gets rid of the exponential on one side and we have to calculate the natural log on the other side. So the natural log of 0 0.4681 is equal to 0 0.75911 equals T divided by RC. And that's because we would get a negative sign here. So I've removed the negative sign from both sides. Now, if we round this up to two decimal places, we end up with 0 0.76 and we take RC to this side. So by multiplying both sides by RC, we get our pulse width is equal to, or the time for the pulse is equal to 0 0.76 times R times C, where R and C are R3 and C1. We can do this calculation with the non-absolute numbers as well. So we can go from minus 4.4 to 0 0.6. All we would need to do is just move these numbers around. We would end up with the same solution. I do believe when you simplify it just to an RC circuit, it gets a little bit easier to calculate and you can see that the answer is 0 0.76 RC. And that is what was requested from the question. So hopefully you found that useful. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below. Thank you for watching today and don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. Bye for now.